This is one of 2020's most hotly anticipated electric cars, and yet there's a chance you may never have even heard of it. You see Polestar is an electrified performance spin-off from Volvo and parent company Geely, and while its first model, the Polestar 1, was a plug-in hybrid, rakish two-door, this is a mainstream model that's altogether a little bit different. It's an important car, and it's got its sights set firmly on the all-conquering Tesla Model 3. The Polestar 2 is a fully electric four-door family car with a near 300-mile range. It's got a 78 kilowatt hour battery, 402 brake horsepower, and an electric motor on each axle. 0 to 62 miles an hour takes less than five seconds, and the interior comes loaded with so much space-age tech, you'd be forgiven for thinking this was some kind of pre-production concept car, rather than something you can go out and buy outright now with your hard-earned cash. To begin with, there's just one battery and spec to choose from, though those after a little added exclusivity can add Polestar's performance pack, a £5,000 option that adds 20-inch alloy wheels, Brembo brakes and manually adjustable Olin's dampers. But in all honesty, most of that kit feels like a bit of a gimmick because it's not like you can adjust those dampers on the fly using a switch inside the cabin. You'll need to go under the bonnet to make those adjustments manually. The chances are you'll find a setting that works for you, most likely the one straight from the factory and you'll leave it well alone. Now, gimmicks aside, this thing looks a million dollars. Volvo's inspiration is quite clear from the front, but inside profile, this thing looks completely unique. It's kind of part SUV, part fastback. Now, there is a sprinkling of XC90 at the rear, but we think that badge alone is going to attract some really inquisitive glances from Tesla drivers at your local rapid charge point. Utilising said rapid charge point will allow you to top up the Polestar's batteries from 10 to 80% in around 30 minutes, thanks to a maximum charging speed of 150 kilowatts. The maker provides an online calculator to help owners figure out how often they'll need to charge their car. A slider for weekly distance is translated into total monthly charges, total savings on petrol, diesel, fuel versus electricity, along with projected CO2 savings. Of course, you can top up at home via a standard 7 kilowatt wall box in around 11 hours. Maximum range stands at 292 miles, more or less on par with more expensive rivals like the Jaguar I-Pace and Audi e-tron, but a little shy of the long-range Tesla Model 3, which will do almost 350 miles on a charge. Every Polestar comes with a Type 2 AC charging cable, as well as a 3-pin plug for occasional use. On the road, providing you leave the dampers in their factory setting, you'll find the Polestar 2 strikes a pretty nice balance between ride and comfort. It can jiggle about a bit, especially at lower speeds around town, but on the open road, especially on the motorway, it flows really nicely. Now, there's a good chance that on the smaller wheels, on the non-performance pack versions, that the ride would be even better, but unfortunately, we've not had a chance to try those just yet. The regenerative braking is strong but predictable, allowing you to pretty much drive this car on one pedal. We did an 85 mile journey this morning and barely touched the brakes at all. Of course, that not only improves the driving experience, but it also lessens wear and tear on consumables like those brakes, which you would find on a car like this quite so heavy as this might be quite extensive. There's loads of grip on offer and it feels like the Polestar uses its considerable weight to its advantage. Stability is excellent and body control for a car like this is pretty good indeed. The steering, okay, it's light, but it's direct enough. But it, to be honest, it's that plentiful, noiseless, linear shove that really, out of corners, takes you by surprise. 0 to 62 miles an hour takes 4.7 seconds, and while that means it's not quite as quick as the very fastest Teslas, there is absolutely nothing on the road that you won't be able to overtake with absolute ease. Now, like most electric cars, the Polestar 2 is very quiet, save for a few little suspension squeaks, which we hope are unique to our test car. It's very quiet in here, especially at higher speeds, where, okay, there's a little bit of road noise from the low profile tires, but it's actually very hushed indeed. Polestar hasn't skimped on standard equipment on the 2. All models get a panoramic sunroof, a fantastic Harman Kardon sound system, wireless phone charging, heated front and rear seats, a heated steering wheel plus 11.5 inch touchscreen and a 12.3 inch driver's display. The sat-nav uses Google Maps and while Android smartphone users are well catered for, Apple CarPlay doesn't yet feature. The options list is limited to paint finishes at £900 a piece, leather upholstery for £4,000, the aforementioned performance pack at £5,000 and an electric tow bar for a grand. You can also add 20-inch alloy wheels to non-performance pack cars for £900. A range of accessories is offered, including child seats, roof racks, and extra charging cables. And in here, the Polestar 2 feels incredibly cool and comfortable. The exterior's minimalist styling continues in the cabin with clean lines, high-quality materials, 
and it all centers around this glorious Android powered central touchscreen, which are used to control most of the car's primary functions, including things like heating, ventilation, media, and the car's sat nav. Then there are these digital dials, which set a really high benchmark in the segment. The graphics, they're crystal clear and you can do full screen mapping, which means you can leave this screen to do whatever you need to do with music, phone or trip information. Under the bonnet, there's enough space to keep the charging cables, while the big benefit of the boot is the fact it's hinged at the roof like a proper hatchback. So despite the fact it's officially a little bit smaller, the Polestar 2's boot is more practical than the Tesla's. There is loads of room to stretch out up front, but that sloping roofline does affect space in the rear, which is only exacerbated by our car's panoramic sunroof. There's a chunky transmission tunnel too, which is a bit of a hangover from the fact this car shares so many parts with the petrol Volvo XC40. But that's where the similarities end. Whereas the Volvo will soon be available in pure electric P8 guys, for now the Polestar has it licked when it comes to rock bottom running costs. Slotting in at a fraction under £50,000, the Polestar is eligible for the government's £3,000 plug-in car grant, while company car drivers won't pay a penny in benefits in car tax during the 2020-2021 tax year. It's also exempt from road tax, and those looking to take advantage of London's recently revised congestion charge will be pleased to know the Polestar escapes that one too. As it stands, we like the Polestar 2 a lot. It's got a useful range, a slick infotainment system, serious performance, and that cool factor that will help it fly out of showrooms. Ultimately, it won't go quite as far, and it's not quite as fast as the Tesla Model 3, but that's just small things on an otherwise clean copybook. Head to drivingelectric.com for all the latest electric and hybrid car advice, news and reviews. And check us out on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. Finally, while you're here, make sure you hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel and turn on notifications to ensure you never miss a video.